let me show you how we can use Lightroom's transformation settings to give your images a more interesting perspective. As always, to follow along, you can find a link to download the raw files in the description of this video. And now, let's begin. So, the very first step to capture all of this road, we need to first merge the panoramic image. In fact, we are going to merge an HDR panorama. So, what we want to do first is select all the images you can see down here. And then we want to right click, go to Photo Merge, and choose HDR Panorama. Lightroom will then give you a preview like this. Here you can do a bunch of different things, for example, changing the projection, which will have a different outcome on the panoramic image, for example. You can also apply some boundary warp to get rid of the edges, or you could simply choose to fill the edges. However, I want to do that manually later on in Photoshop. I don't change anything for this image in this case, so just hit the merge button. So after merging the image, the next thing we want to do is to get the exposure right before starting to work on the transformation settings. That is because we want to get a better idea of how the image will look later on. And thus, let's jump into the basic panel and right away I want to change the profile to Adobe Landscape to give this image some more saturation. I'm also going to work on the white balance a little bit, making the temperature warmer and thus just introducing some more warmth to this image to kind of get the golden hour light going on here. Okay, so now for the exposure. We are working with an HDR shot, that means we do have a huge dynamic range to play around with. The first thing I want to do is to bring down the exposure, restoring details from those very, very bright areas. That's actually a little bit too much. Let's bring it up a notch. I think right around here looks very, very good. Then I also want to bring down the highlights, which will bring out more details in the sky and those very bright areas of the landscape. And for more contrast, I'm going to drop the shadows. This helps to give this image more punch, but we need to be careful to not introduce any underexposure. Right now, there is a little bit of underexposure, not that dramatic, but I still want to fix it by bringing up the blacks. Perfect. And then for some further contrast, I'm going to bring up the whites. All right, that looks like a great shot already. What I want to do next is to bring up the texture. And at the same time, I'm going to drop the clarity and I'm dropping the dehaze very, very gently to add a very subtle autumn glow effect, kind of. And then let's also bring up the vibrance. Perfect. And that's the image after the basic adjustments. You can see it looks much better. We have a lot more detail in every area of this image. So what we can do now is to work on the transformation. This means we are heading out of the basic adjustments and we want to start this in the lens corrections. As always, I'm making sure to check remove chromatic aberration and then let's head over into the manual tab. What we can do here is to use the distortion amount to kind of give the image a fisheye effect. For this scene, I want to create an inverted fisheye effect. So I'm going to apply a little bit of distortion here. And as I'm just shrinking the center, I just want to apply a very low amount. But my reasoning here is by shrinking this area, the road in the center of the image is kind of closer together, if that makes sense. So this part is closer to this part and the upper areas of the road are closer to this circle down here. So that's already a cool little trick you can do. Next up, we want to head out of the lens corrections and go straight into the transform panel. And now you can play around with a few different things. What I want to do first is I want to make this circle area a little more prominent. So I can use the vertical slider and I can play around with it. Let's increase it and you can see this circle in the foreground gets bigger as I push the vertical slider up. Of course, this will have a decreasing effect on the back, but for this image, the background is not that important. I want the circle to have the most attention. So making it bigger will achieve that. We can raise the vertical slider a little more, just like that. Now the circle is kind of leaning a little bit to the left side. We can use the horizontal slider to kind of fix that. And I'm just increasing it a little bit just so it's a little more balanced between left and right. 
Okay, that looks pretty nice so far. Adjusting the horizontal slider also does make this image look a little bit uneven. So we could either use the crop tool or we can use the rotate slider to fix that. I'm just going to slightly bump up the rotation here and that's looking much, much better. Another very cool thing we can do in the transform panel is we can kind of stretch the image vertically. And this is something that works really, really good on mountain landscapes like this. So what I'm doing next is to just increase the aspect slider. And by doing this, we will make the image thinner, but we will also scale it vertically. Of course, this is nothing you should overdo. So be very, very careful here. I just want to apply a very low amount here. Otherwise, this circle area will get smaller as well, and that's not exactly what we want. Okay, and finally, since we moved around this image a little bit, I can also make use of the Y offset. Bringing up the slider will also bring up the image, as you can see. All right, and at this point, we can apply a little bit of cropping. So let me activate the cropping mode, and I'm going to take away a bit from the top and from the bottom always keeping that circle nicely centered. I do think I want to change the aspect ratio, so I'm going to stretch it a bit up here and I'm going to take away a bit more from each of the sides. All right, I think that looks great. Let's crop it like this. Now let me deactivate the transform setting so you can see the difference from before to after. And it's pretty clear we now have a lot more attention on the most important part of this image. So now that we have adjusted the transformation stuff, let's also do a little bit of masking. Let's start with something simple. I'm going to choose a color range mask and I'm going to click right here in the blue part of the sky because I want to make the top part of the sky darker. Now, of course, we also have some blue areas in the foreground, but don't worry. We just hit the subtract button, choose a linear gradient, and I'm going to subtract quite a bunch of it from the foreground. So only really the top part of the sky will get darkened. I'm going to drop the exposure for that, and I'm going to drop it a lot. Just like this, we can adjust this linear gradient a little more, so this effect might be a little softer. But that looks great. Then let me create a radial gradient covering that circle in the foreground. Of course, you want to bring up the feather for that to get a nice soft edge. And let's place it right over here. What I want to do in here is I want to bring up the whites, making this area brighter. I also think I want to bring up the temperature just to reduce those colder color tones in the shadows here. And I also think I want to add a bit of clarity to make this area pop. Okay, then I want to dodge these bright highlights in the landscape in the back. Therefore, I'm using another color range mask. I'm just clicking somewhere in the yellow area. And again, I don't want to affect the foreground right here. So I'm just saying subtract, choose a linear gradient, and take away a part from the foreground. Now what I want to do with this area is to make it brighter by raising the exposure very, very carefully. I do also want to add a specific color to this spot, making it a little more vibrant. I'm not going to touch the temperature for that. Instead, I'm going to click on that color box, set up the hue to something warm, just like around here. And I'm going to bring up the saturation a little more. Perfect. And finally, let me create a linear gradient for the very near foreground. I want to make it darker without affecting that road. So I'm going to say subject, choose a radial gradient. And I'm trying to fit the shape of this radial gradient to the shape of the road. So I think that looks good. Now, instead of a soft edge, we want this radial gradient to have a hard edge. So I'm going to bring down the feather all the way. And just like that, we have masked out the road. All I'm doing now is to just bring down the exposure. And again, this will help to make this area a little more prominent as we are adding contrast here. Wonderful. Now we're done with the masking adjustments. Let's continue with the color grading and I want to head into the color mixer for that. Here, I just want to play around with the luminance. We can use orange and yellow. Bringing those two up will make those highlights in the landscape brighter. And I also want to bring up the blue luminance. This will make the sky brighter. 
And of course, we can also apply some split toning within the color grading panel. And we start with the highlights, making the highlights warmer by giving them a warm hue. Let's say somewhere around here and let's slightly bring up the saturation. Okay, that looks great. We can do the same for the midtones. Again, I'm choosing a warm hue for them. Bring up the saturation a notch, and this will really help with the golden hour light. Perfect. And if we want, we can also head into the shadows to add some color contrast by applying a cold hue to the shadows. Just make sure to use a low amount of saturation here. Wonderful. Finally, we want to head all the way down into the calibration tab. And as always, I'm just playing around with those sliders, adding a little bit of saturation to everything. And I want to bring down the blue primary hue as well. That looks perfect. Now the only thing left to do in Lightroom is the sharpening. So let's head into the details tab, bring down the radius, increase the details, add some masking, and then increase the amount of sharpening. Done. Now all that's left to do is we want to get rid of that gap at the top and I'm going to do that in Photoshop. So right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. Okay, first up I want to duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J to have a backup. Then let me select the gap at the top using the lasso tool. Just making a very rough selection here. And I'm hitting Shift F5, choose Content Aware and hit OK. Wonderful. While we're here in Photoshop, we can also clean up this image a bit. For example, this dark corner down here is kind of distracting, so I want to get rid of it. Again, just making a rough selection using the lasso tool, hit Shift F5 and choose Content Aware. Perfect. I also want to get rid of those guys right at the bottom. Therefore, I'm using the Spot Healing Brush. It's, it just works faster than the Remove tool. And for things like this, it should be good enough. Now with those cars, we might have a problem. So I'm going to switch to the remove tool, which has been very, very slow for the past few weeks. Let's hope it works. Perfect. There's also a bike which we can remove. All right. And in this car right here. Let's see if this works. It does. Nice. So that's it for cleaning up the shot. And that's also it for editing this image. I hope this little Lightroom tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.